Hey guys, this is Comic Frontline, and I'm here with Tom Falco and Jay, so we're going to all introduce ourselves. Uh, so, Tom Falco, introduce yourself uh, to the show. Hi, I'm Tom DeFalco. <laughs> uh, what have you previously worked on and everything? That way uh, our audience knows. Uh, how long is this show going to last? Uh, <laughs> probably... <laughs> 15 to 30 minutes, I would say. All right. Let me put it, you know, simple. You know, I've probably written every Marvel character and about half the, half the DC characters and uh, almost all the Archie characters. Um, and that's only part of my career. Yes, yeah, so you've probably seen his work somewhere, especially if you're a big Marvel Spider-Man fan. You're part of the Marvel. So, uh, yeah. So, Jay, how about you introduce, introduce yourself to... Hey, everyone. Jay here from Comic Front Line, Comic Book Theater. Um, really great to be here with Tom DeFalco. Created some of the greatest characters out there right now. I totally agree. Uh, Spider Girl obviously is my favorite character of all time. I try to promote it as much as possible. Uh, right now, I'm reviewing every uh, issue of Spider Girl. I'm up to like issue 26, I think. So, uh, yeah, I love the characters. Uh, I love your work. So, uh, one question I do want to ask is what's some current projects you have going on right now? Well, in, in the world of comics, um, I've, I've just done a couple of things for Archie Comics. Uh, did a Cosmo, uh, an Archie story where he runs into Cosmo the Merry Martian and uh, goes off to save the universe with the good guys of the galaxy. Um, did a Betty and Veronica story and, 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 and then another Archie story. Um, I, I just worked on, I actually just worked on a, um, a, a new Spider Man story with. Um, an unlikely artist, Stan G. Stan Goldberg, who actually colored Fantastic Four number one and well, a lot of the early uh, issues of Spider-Man. It's going to be for some special Marvel thing coming up, which I probably shouldn't be talking about that. <laughs> you hear <laughs> that like, now on Comic Frontline. <laughs> certainly it occurs to me, but that's okay. Um, um, that should be awesome. I love I love your work on Spider Man, and uh, I know I previously I think you just previously did an anniversary or two, um, not like a year ago, right? Um, yeah, sort of, kind of. It was actually an old inventory story that they pulled out to use for an anniversary story. <laughs> Imagine my surprise. Um, you know, I I don't know if uh, someone had told me uh, we're going to do a Spider Man anniversary issue. Whether or not I would have chosen a story about, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, people who are, uh, you know, mistreating uh, illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. What are you whispering about? <laughs> Jay, yeah. you so can see you're whispering. You wrote, this next coming one. <laughs> I'm talking off. I'm sorry. I'm talking to someone here. I'm sorry. No, okay, no, yeah. they, that's okay. <laughs> That's the best yeah, thing about class. class. You get mute and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, you know when that issue is going to be coming out um, with the Spider Man one, if you could say or not? <laughs> um, I, to be honest, I have no idea when it's coming out. Um, most of the time, when I work on things, I, I really don't pay too much attention to when they're going to come out. Mm -hmm. you know, so just look out for it. And Jay, uh, because you were just talking about Archie, you're a big Archie fan, so um, you want to ask him about Archie, right? right Jay? Oh, yeah. Um, how is it? Um, you were responsible for one of the biggest books that Archie has out right now, The Digest. How, um, how did that come about? I ripped off the idea. <laughs> a million years ago, um, I was working at Archie Comics, and. Um, I think it was, I think it was Gold Key came out with a, some um, digest books, and, uh, you know, a, a Tarzan book and a couple of, uh, you know, Uncle Scrooge comics, Disney comics, and I looked at the Disney comics and I thought, man, this is perfect for Archie. So I went to the um, to the uh, owner of the company, the publisher at the time, uh, John Goldwater. I said, Mr. Goldwater, I have this great idea. I think we should do. Digest books. 
and he looked at me and said, Are you out of your mind? Get out of here! <laughs> Um, so I scurried back into the uh, Archie bullpen and uh, hid out for a couple of days. And then a couple of days later, he walked, he walked in and he says, I have a great idea. We're going to do these Archie Digest books. And Tom, we're sticking you with this job. <laughs> it turned out to be one of the biggest hits with Archie Comics right now. Still to this day. Oh, definitely. Uh, I think that's one thing as a, a non-Archie uh, fan, but not as much of an Archie fan. Um, that's the one thing I feel like, even if you're not an Archie fan, you know about these digest books. These are all over Barnes and Noble and all these stores, so I think it's great to see that. You know, they, it's it's just a great format. It was, you know, for for certain kinds of material, it really worked with Archie. Did not work so well with GI Joe. Oh, that's actually a question. Um, one of uh, our members from Comic Frontline wanted to ask about G.I. Joe. Um, how did the whole Hasbro Transformers deal work with Marvel? And what, what are your thoughts uh, that now the rights are to IDW? I'll be right back, guys. Okay. okay. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think the idea came about because Hasbro was going to bring back G.I. Joe. And they wanted a unique way to advertise the um, the toys, and and at that time there were all sorts of restrictions on how you could advertise toys on television, and their advertising agency realized there were absolutely no restrictions on how to advertise comic books on television. Uh, with toys, you really couldn't use any animation, but with comic books, and no comic book. Uh, had ever been advertised on television. There were no restrictions. So they figured, you know, we'll get Marvel to produce a comic book, and then we'll advertise the comic book with animation, make it look really exciting, and then later on we release the toys. And, Very cool uh, PR idea. <laughs> yeah, it was a terrific idea. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, they came to us and they said, you know, we have the this character called G.I. Joe. Uh, and he's a ranger, he's this, he's that. You know, I forget all the, the different versions. And we looked and we said, well, you know, it's got to be more than one guy because you have a bunch of different toys. So we sat down and we kind of wor worked it out. Now, I, you know, I don't want to get, you know, steal too much credit because Larry Hama did all, of, all the real hard work. Um, Larry Hama is really the genius behind all of that sort of stuff. I just got to sit behind Larry and go, oh, uh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, so, you know, we worked out a Bible for the characters. Uh, Larry worked out, um, you know, the, the, those little uh, character sketches where, you know, it, Basically, the format that we use for the Marvel Universe entry and everything else like that, the sketches that appeared on, on the backs of all the, uh, you know, all, all of the uh, toys, which basically gave the guy's real name, his, you know, his specialty, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, the profile cards. Profiles. I'm calling them sketches, but profile cards is a much better word. Um, and... Um, Hasbro just really loved it. They decided, you know what? Maybe we should do a regular comic book. And, you know, by that time, we had fallen in love with the characters. So we said, yeah. So just a great partnership all, all the way through, which is great. It, it, it was terrific. Uh, Hasbro and Marvel back in those days, we were totally in sync. And we worked, we worked together very, very well. They were a great bunch of guys. Um... They they were just a dream to work with. Um, I uh, know that you know uh, after I left as editor in chief, Marvel decided to get rid of all of its licenses, which I thought was a big mistake. Um, they gave up on the GI Joe license and the Transformers license. I'm so happy that they're with IDW these days. I, th I think IDW is doing a great job. They have Larry Hama back. They have Chuck yeah. Dixon. They've got some really great guys working on it. So, you know, I, I just wish them the best luck. Same thing with the Transformers. 
which is great. And it seems like they're doing great in their own little corner, and uh, great to see that. Um, another question from Brand actually is uh, looking back at the Clone Saga, what did you think of the arc as a whole? I, I am the worst person in the world to ask about the Clone Saga. <laughs> Um, That's why we asked you. <laughs> okay. Well, when they originally came up with the idea for the Clone Saga, I hated the idea. Um, I was the editor in chief at the time. I hated the idea. I went to a meeting um, to talk, to, to basically tell the guys we were not going to do it. And that's why I went to the meeting. And the, all the guys were sitting around the table and trying to explain to me why, this, why we should do this story with such passion in their voices. Um, you know, when, when Sal Buscema gets up and passionately explains how this is going to just shake up the whole Spider-Man universe and it'll be great and everybody will love it and that sort of stuff, you have to sit back and listen. So I just sat there and I thought, you know, wait a minute, guys, you know, we're going to get rid of Peter Parker, the Peter Parker we've known. You know, how are we going to you know, just say goodbye to Peter Parker. I mean, you know, the only way we could do it is if, if he has a real happy ending, like if Mary Jane got pregnant, or at which point everybody started cheering. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized I had sunk myself. Um, like, all right, the Clone Saga's going to exist. <laughs> yeah, and, and then thought, hey, actually, yeah, Peter Parker can have a happy ending. He can go off and be with Mary Jane and live happily ever after until we screw that up. <laughs> and then Spider Girl came along, so it was all good. <laughs> uh, well, Spider Girl. Um, um, cat, cat loves Spider Girl beyond anything. Oh my God, you got Jay knows that. I think everybody that watches our my videos, watches Comic Frontline, knows that I'm a humongous Spider Girl fan. <laughs> oh, well, good. Spider Girl was, um, you know, it, it was a it, it, it was a work of love. Now, you know, I'm a sap. I, I fall in love with every character that I'm writing because, because I have to. Um, you guys spend 20 minutes reading the comic book. Me, I'm spending a lot more than 20 minutes. I'm, I'm spending more than 20 minutes per page on each comic book. So I really have to care about my characters. I really have to love them. And, you know, Spider-Girl, you know... It was just something that, you know, Ron Friends and I did as a one-shot. We, you know, we did that one story. Uh, it was a story that I, I had in, in the back of my head. I had to just get it out. I got it out. And Ron, as we finished up, up the issue, Ron said, do you think we can ever do a second Spider-Girl story? And I said, ah, I don't know. It's a what-if story. <laughs> maybe maybe we could do one other one some, somewhere along the time. But let's not, you know, let's not kid ourselves. It's what if. When, you know, the company decided to do it as a regular book, I was totally surprised. They originally only asked for six issues, and I thought, okay, we could do six issues. And then they said, you know, maybe 12 issues. And then they said, you know, maybe six more. And then they said, you know what, we don't want to end it, you know, with issue 16. How about you make 17 a double size issue? That'll be the end. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll do six more. <laughs> and they ended up doing that for 13 years. <laughs> yes, and making a 100-issue series, the longest-running female comic book series uh, in Marvel. Then we had Amazing Spider-Girls and all these other Spider-Girls. Superhero series. It, it's funny because at one point somebody was looking at things and saying, you know, Spider-Girl was actually the last successful series that, that Marvel had ever launched. Um, you know, these days they, they launch Avenger books that, that barely go, you know, you know, 12 issues. <laughs> we, we always talk about, totally agree on that. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you guys, do you guys, um, you know, believe the myth that Spider-Girl was always about, you know, you know, it was a poor selling book that was always, you know, going to get canceled? I... I always loved that the fan base was so great for it. So I, even though it's like, oh my god, it's getting canceled once again, uh, I, I don't know. I just loved how the fan base kind of brought it back. It was great, well, you know. The fan base was terrific because 
anytime there was a rumor that Spider Girl was going to get canceled, sales went up. <laughs> but well, that's go true. That's what the rumors did, right? Exactly. Um, and uh, you know, it was a uh, you know. I, I just want to say that Marvel did not keep that book going for 13 years because they were losing money. <laughs> <laughs> Very they weren't trying to be nice to me. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> um, uh, next question, I guess we'll ask is: since we we're talking about just projects you have worked on, uh, what are some projects you would like you would like to work on in the future um, that you have worked on, or maybe you have worked on and just want to continue? I you know, I've I've always had a soft spot my my heart for Captain America. Um. And you know, you know, and and you know, I, I if 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 I could do my dream, you know, schedule in comic books, you know, and luckily I can't. <laughs> 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 yes, my accountant would kill me if I did this. Um, I would do a you know a superhero comic book, you know, a humor comic book, and a sword and sorcery comic book. Just you know, just to have be able to do three different things. Um, Sounds like an interesting schedule to me. That'd be awesome to say. It would be a fun schedule, you know, because be. you know, and I could you know do other things on the side. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, also, uh, what's your thoughts on Superior Spider-Man? Uh, the whole Pirates of Run and Parker and I returning. This has uh, been a big discussion on. Every comic site. <laughs> well, it, it's funny. Um, now I haven't read any of the Superior Spider-Man, so so it's inappropriate for me to talk about it. Uh, however, Ron Friends pointed something out to me recently. The last Goblin story we did with Norman Osborn. Osborn's plan was to use engrams. To put his mind into, into Peter Parker's body, um, and uh, his his thing ultimately uh, failed. <laughs> but it but it's interesting that I, I gather Superior Spider Spider Man, uh, man basically uh, you know it's the same thing. Yeah, exploited that idea. So it's good to see that the Spider Girl fans are still still hard at work. Yeah, I, I mean, it's 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 so weird to see. Like, do you think it's different that Doctor? I mean, would you expect Doctor Octopus to be the person to replace Spider Man? Or like, you know, those Green Goblin. That's something that everyone could see if if this this crazy idea would happen. Uh, but did you expect Doctor Octopus at all? Um, you know, in in many regards, I always looked at Doctor Octopus as the man Peter Parker could have become if if the spider had bitten him later in life. Um, because there's there's a lot of similarities between Peter Parker and Otto Octavius. Uh, at one point, I'd written an origin story for for Otto because I realized there had never really been an you know his we never knew his backstory. Um, and I, you know, if you read that story, uh, I think it appeared in Spider-Man Unlimited a million years ago. Um, I, I basically, you know, showed the similarities between Peter and Otto. Yeah, there's that's a lot. Why I, I, that's why I've always said too that um, Doctor Octopus is. If Aunt May and Uncle Ben weren't there for Peter, you could see Peter becoming Doctor Octopus. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that's something Superior Spider-Man does explore, which is kind of cool. You never think Dr. Octopus as being an arch nemesis for Spider-Man, so I think it is cool to explore that type of thing. And like you said, they are so similar, so why not make it kind of his arch nemesis not, in a way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so what was your favorite Spider-Man story you worked on? You worked on Spider-Man so many years. My favorite Spider-Man series or, or, or story? Or yeah, favorite Spider-Man, I guess, issue or story you worked on. And we'll exclude Spider-Girl for now because we'll ask another question about Spider-Girl. But his favorite Spider-Man story? I, 
I have to be honest, I, you know, I've never really thought about it. I, you know, one, you know, one that I often think about though is is this story called "Whatever Happened to Crusher Hogan?" Um, it was a story about um, Crusher Hogan when when Peter first got his his powers. There was a wrestler and. And Peter got in the ring with this wrestler. The guy's name was Prussia Hogan. And um, we did a story about, you know, Crusher is kind of a punch drunk wrestler um, who realized later, you know, later on that the guy he faced in the ring, the person who humiliated him, was Spider Man. And he's actually concocted this. Uh, fake history between him and Spi his good friend Spider-Man. And um, he gets involved with um, I, you know, some bad guys and I, I don't remember the details of the story. But it was one of those stories that um, you know, Peter is trying to solve a problem. In the meantime, uh, you know, Aunt May wants him to do something and he ends up solving the problem but failing Aunt May. And, uh, Which he seems like he always does, does now. <laughs> Just bail at me all the time. <laughs> well, you, you know, the, the, the magic of Peter Parker is, you know, he is someone obsessed with responsibility. Um, and no matter how hard he tries, he can't please everybody. He can't, can't do it all. You know, he can save the city, but if he saves the city, he's going to disappoint his girlfriend. Now, really... It's better that he saves the city, because uh, if he didn't, his girlfriend wouldn't be there anyway. But, but, you know, it, it's always hard because you know we're, we're given this myth we can have it all, and the truth is, you know, hey, if you can get sixty percent of it, you're, you're doing great. Yeah, definitely, and I think yeah, it's balancing that, and that's always been what Spider-Man is about. That old Parker love. A question about uh, Mary Jane, actually. Uh, what do you think of them not being together? Because you know your your stories were a lot about their relationship. You know, Spider Girl is a lot about their relationship. And it's one of my favorite relationships. I, I love what they did with Spider-Man. So, what do you think that they're not together now? I, you know, I can understand why they think they had to do it because they think their audience. Uh, is in high school still, which is <laughs> not quite right. Um, you know, they believe that Spider-Man, somebody said Spider-Man is about you, um, which I thought is kind of ridiculous, because to me Spider-Man is about responsibility. And, you know, I like the idea of just piling more and more responsibilities on them. That's why I like the idea of it. You know, ultimately of him getting married and ultimately of, of them having a baby. Um, if I was writing the, the series and they told me they wanted to break Spider-Man up, I would have just either had them get separated or, or have them get divorced um, and then let Peter be haunted by you know, either the separation or the divorce. Um, the idea of uh, bringing Mephisto in, a little bit too imaginative for my tastes. I totally agree, definitely. Um, uh, Jay, do you have any questions? Um, yeah. One of the, um, one of the one teams of the that you actually created is um, New Warriors. They just launched their new title this week. Um, what are your thoughts on the classic New Warriors that you created, like your process of doing that, and if you picked up the new series or not? Well, I'm, I'm not going to pick up the new series. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I, you know, I, I'm too cheap to to buy things that I've created. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, my thoughts from you know twenty some odd years ago, um, I don't remember. I think I, I think I, I think my basic thought was. Um, DC had this book called The Teen Titans, and they decided that they, you know, were going to change the book to The Titans. They're not teenagers anymore. They're young adults, and this and that, and the other thing. And 
you know, at that time, the vast majority of our readers were what I used to refer to as 16-year-olds of all ages. Both a lot of people younger than 16 who dreamed of the day they would become the magic 16, and people who are older than 16 who wish they were still 16. <laughs> Um, and that really was the majority of our of, of our readership. Um, you know, we did pretty good up until high, you know, you know, up until high school. Um, I used to say that once people uh, discover cars or, or or sex, that's that's when they stop reading comic books. Uh, because because up as soon as you discover one or the other, suddenly di discover money is very finite. Um, so I thought, well, the majority of our readership right now is is actually, you know, teenagers and younger. So I want to do a book about teenage superheroes. So I looked around, you know, the the universe, picked out our teenage superheroes. <coughs> I added, you know, one or two just to. You know, make life a little bit more interesting, and then you know, went to town on it. And it's great to see that the title is still, even though it's something different now, it's still, um, you know, still going on today, which is great. And and I'm sure they'll do a, a great job on it. I'm just, you know. No, I definitely agree. It's like so your creations just you don't know if you want to see it in, a, in another person's uh, view, kind of in a way. It's kind of like your babies in a way. Well, you know. The, Whenever I would stop writing a series, I would stop reading that comic book um, because it would take me about a year or so to get the voices out of my head. Um, when you're living with Peter Parker for, you know, the, the the amount of time I have to live with Peter Parker, when somebody else writes him, the voice sounds weird to me. Um, so I have to. So so when I gave up Spider Man, I had to. I I didn't read Spider Man for two or three years, you know, just to get the make sure that the voices were, were out of my head, so that I could look at it objectively. Yeah, definitely. I, I totally agree with that. I think that's, as a writer, it's something you kind of have to do because again, you you spend so much time on it, and if it's another person's voice, you kind of have to distance yourself from it. Uh, Jay, you have any more questions? Um. I wanted to ask, to date, what's your, what do you think your biggest accomplishment in comic books are to date? That I've hung around so long? I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, you know, guys, I, I have always looked at this as one job at a time, and I, um, you know, I, I tend not to look backwards, so I don't really think a lot about what I've done. I'm, you know, more afraid of the deadlines that bloom in front of me than... <laughs> than well, thank you. Talking about, talking about looking back, back, if you had to look back for Spider-Girl, what would be your favorite issue for Spider-Girl, though? My, my favorite one for Spider-Girl? Yeah. Um, th 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 there were two of them that always, you know... I actually, I guess there were three of them that, that you know, we, we did this one about this invisible girl. Uh, yeah, I love that issue. Great issue. Okay. Um, and um, we also did one called The Girl Who Fell to Earth mm -hmm. about the girl who was being beat up by her boyfriend. And that one had a lot of emotional charge for us. And then there was this one issue which... I, I didn't intend to be a, an issue. I, I, I intended it, you know, I was actually thinking of it as kind of a writing exercise. Um, and then an issue actually formed in my head. I, you know, and I spoke to Pat Olive about it. He said, oh, wow, that's a great issue. we got to do it. <laughs> um, there was an issue where Spider-Girl spends the whole issue tied to a chair. Um, and, and oh yeah, I just literally read that today because I have to review it. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, and and Normie Osborne, it starts out has this big knife and he's about to kill her. Then the the Parker, you know, Osborne 
war. And, you know, and somehow or other, they overpowers it by sheer, sheer force of personality. I, I, I you know, <coughs> her sheer heart. I, you know, so, uh, you know, th those three are the ones that always, you know, pop in my, my head. But, yeah, you know, I totally I agree. I just read the issue you, you were talking about literally before this uh, interview with Bata, do a video for it. And I love that issue just because it shows who Spire Girl is. Um, I think she's always been a person that could redeem people. Uh, without, she didn't even have her Spire powers. And I feel like, for me, that arc was always about that. You know, her not having her Spire powers and redeem this big war about the Green Goblin and the Spider War. Uh, it just tells so much about her personality. Uh, so for a character, I thought that was like one of her biggest issues um, to show that she undermined character, but she could show herself and uh, be a very strong character because of her personality, not because of her her powers, because she's a little weaker than Spider-Man, but uh, stronger in other suits. So uh, love that issue. Totally agree. <laughs> well, see, Peter, you know, Peter Parker and, and, and Mayday Parker are, are both very similar in that they're always themselves. And occasionally they put on masks but it's still Peter Parker under that mask. It's still Mayday Parker under that mask. So, so when I wrote those series, I always wrote them. I was writing the Adventures of Peter Parker, who occasionally puts on a costume and calls himself Spider-Man. The Adventures of of May, Mayday Parker, who occasionally puts on a, a a costume, but it was all about Mayday. It was all about Peter, and and they're very different from somebody like Captain America, who He's always Captain America. He takes off the mask. He's pretending to be Steve Rogers, but he's always Captain America. No, I totally agree. That's something you definitely look at. Something you can see. And uh, I just think about the comic in my head. That's something you see is that I main thing that makes us love Spider Man and Spider Girl so much is that uh, they're grounded in a way because they are themselves, uh, even under the mask. Well, you know, back in. In, in the day when I was doing comic books regularly and that sort of stuff, we were focused on characterization and on the soap opera aspects, and we wanted the characters to fit into a real world, and 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 you had to feel that these characters were real, and they were living real lives, and you were just peering into them every once in a while. Nowadays, it seems like people in costume only talk to other people in costume, and. Um, you know. That's definitely a different view. Uh, yeah, very few comics like Spider Girl and, and what you said, that real world again. Um, but sometimes you find them every once in a while. Um, yeah, so next question for me is uh, if you could have continued Spider Girl, um, would you, anything you want to tell us you, you kind of would have done? Say that again? Like if you could continue Spider Girl, let's say the end wasn't the end, uh, what is something you you had some ideas of what you would have done. Again, anything you want to reveal, of course. Uh, you know, I I haven't looked at my notes in a long time. I, you know, I, you know, I'm the kind of writer that I can stay on a series forever. So, um, because the longer you're with this with a character, the more you delve into the character, the more you get to know them. You know, and the deeper, you know, can be your stories. Um, I'm always amazed when I, you know, hear about a writer who's on a book for 12 issues and, and says, I've, I've said everything I, I have to say about this character. You know, because I look at them and say, well, you had not, not, not a lot to say. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, uh, Ron Friends and I had enough stuff to carry us for, you know, at least another two years, and, and by the time those two years were up, we would have come up with more ideas. And that's what one thing great about Spider Girl. I felt like there was a uh, um, unlimited amount of stories about her. Uh, do you think at any day you think it would ever return Spider Girl? You think it, there's ever opportunity that the character would return? I, you know, I think it's always possible that that the character could return. Um, you know, uh, anything is possible. Um, I I don't think that if they if the character did return, Marvel would call me. Uh, 
Well, hopefully they would, because it would be smart if they did. Well, that would be smart, but uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be holding my breath, I, and uh, you know, I'm not really sure that uh, you know, getting back into monthly deadlines with comics is really the best thing for me at this stage of the game. And definitely. Well, hopefully we'll see the character once again, but uh, keep your vision in mind also. That's one thing if I do hope if you weren't working on the title, which again, I would love for you to work on the title once again, but again, monthly deadlines and everything, and you know, the series did end, but I, I would hope that that next writer would keep your vision in mind. Uh, I think that's the only thing I can really hope for, you know? Well, you know, I think the next writer will come up, you know, the next writer has to come up with his own vision. And, um, you know, I, I wish, you know, him or her the, the best of luck. And I hope they have as much fun with the character as I had. Yeah, that, it, hopefully you never know. But, uh, Jay, do you have any more questions? Um, I was just going to ask, um, what are your upcoming pro um, projects that you have? Um, is there anything on the pipeline? Well, I, I mentioned a couple of Archie comics that, that are coming out, and um, that Marvel thing I couldn't discuss, and then there's one, one more DC thing that I probably can't discuss either. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on all those projects. Is there anything else you want to add? Or? Uh, nothing other than you know to thank all the readers for being there for so many years. Uh, you know, I really appreciate it, you know, and... Uh, you know, I, you know, I I had, and I'm still having a great time with this stuff. Yes, and we're I'm still having a great time just rereading uh, all your work again. It's really a great ride. Uh, thank you for being on. This is an, a great show. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. This is Comic Frontline. We'll see you guys later. Yeah.